Back in the day, the writing down was the only thing you had. Ten ways. This is ten ways not to do a lousy break job. So there's a little test here at the end of this. All right. You need to know how they drive their car to begin with. Do they pull heavy loads? Are they just a light driver? Do they not want their wheels to be dusted up? You know what I mean? You ever seen the dust on the wheels? What do you do about that? What do you do to prevent that? Parts girl. Somebody comes in, they say, Hey, parts girl, I got dust on my wheels. I don't mind cleaning the wheels, but I want you to tell me what I need to do to get the dust off my wheels. And you say, why don't you let me sell you a good pair of ceramic brake pads? All right. Gather as much information as you can. The customer that tows or drives aggressively may require upgraded pads or rotors. Vehicle owner concerned about brake dust may be interested in a ceramic brake pad. Got it? She has deer in the headlights. Look there for a second, didn't she? Don't do an improper or incomplete inspection. Look it over really good. Don't just glance at this one and that one and don't even pay attention to the back ones because you may find that. And whenever my son was working at a tire store in Enterprise, you know, they did brakes this all the time. And uh, he says, uh, Mike, he said, I had a brake pulsation on this Grand Cherokee or whatever it was. And I did brakes on the front machine, the rotors. And he says, and it still pulsates just like it did. Mike looks at the clock and says, yeah, and she'll be here in about 45 minutes, and here we are with our pants down around our ankles. You know? Well, anyway, the rear ones were the ones that were pulsing. And they had no, ignored the rear ones and did the front ones. That's a good idea to sort of check them. Uh, rear brakes don't feel quite like front ones when they're pulsing, so they'll have a different feel to them. All right. Park brake operations important, too. You know? All right. Inspect related systems, steering, suspension, tires, wheels. You know, you can actually have a, a braking problem because of other issues. You know how if you've got worn out steering components when you hit the brake, if things shift underneath the car, or maybe the, you know, it can cause it to pull one way or another when you're hitting the brakes and all. Uh, you may not have a brake problem whenever you, but you may be have a worn or bent control arm, that kind of thing. Incidentally, the same guy that owns that Volkswagen uh, said that he wants the whole front end rebuilt under the F-150 he's got with all of the ball joints and everything. So. I guess Caleb will have to do that. All right, so uh, avoid incorrect parts or replacement procedures. I always, always, always tell you guys that the slide calipers have got to move freely. And if you see parts whenever you're looking at them, if you see pads that are worn like a wedge, or maybe the inside pad is worn out really bad and the outside pad's real thick, you got me? And if there's, there's a reason for that, if you've got an inside pad. What's the inside pad is, is the one that's being directly have the piston's directly applying pressure to it, right? And the outside pad, if the caliper's not floating, may not even be letting, you know, the outside pad apply at all. Use a dial indicator to measure for excessive rotor runout. What kind of runout is that they're checking? How would you describe that runout test they're doing? What kind of runout are they testing for? Lateral. Lateral, good, good answer. Make sure hub surfaces are smooth when installing rotors. Be ready to clean that. If you see bumpy, rusty crap or, you know, somebody's been, you know, been doing the mud thing, you know, you'd be surprised how that'll make a difference in the way that thing feels. And also on the inside and the outside of the rotors, you know, we're working on a machine and on the machine, we check for that. Uh, don't just replace part of the parts that it needs. Uh, you know, if you got brake hoses that look like they're going to need to be replaced, rusty brake lines and all that. Now, a lot of times, you know, we have the idea when we're going into a brake job, one of the things that, that kind of messes people up, you go into a, break, a job you think is going to be a simple job, and it turns into a monster. That doesn't mean you can shove it out of the way and say, well, I think I'll go on to the next easy job, right? So the long and the short of it is, that's why we, that's why we stayed on the uh, uh, Impala last time until we got all the brake lines replaced. Because, see, imagine this. What if we replaced the... Some of the brake lines, but not all of them, and one we didn't replace gave way. And, you know, they drove, they drove the car in good faith thinking that we were going to fix them all. Uh, pay attention to rusty brake lines that may be about to fail. I have had a uh, brake line bust on me back in uh, the early 80s. Volkswagen had a, uh, the brake lines were running under the carpet on some of those old rabbits. 
Well, naturally, you're going to have times when the carpet gets wet. And it keeps happening, the brake lines are going to start to rust. We had a, when I was at the Volkswagen dealer, we had a recall. We were supposed to pull the carpet up, look at the brake lines, see if they were rusty. If they were rusty, we were supposed to replace them. That was a recall. And uh, the one that the recall had already supposedly been done on the car that I was driving, um, but apparently it wasn't done, or maybe the, the lines rusted again. I don't know what happened. This nickel uh, line that we got now, this nickel copper stuff, it doesn't rust, which is good. And it's easier to work with too, you know, the stuff like roll stuff I got out there. But anyway, I hit the brake down at the uh, traffic circle when I was going back to work. I heard the brake spread out over the carpet. Pull up on the park brake. You got to be a gunslinger when that park brake, man. You know, pull that thing up and manage to slide and do a stop. You know? um, avoid the use of poor quality parts. Pads and rotors, 1999. Now, sometimes Advance will have a deal worth for $79.99, they'll have pads and rotors, which isn't too bad. You know, but if the pads are really, really cheap and the rotors are really, really cheap, there's usually a reason why they're so cheap. Uh, dirt cheap brake parts, the quality of some of them, you know, are in question. Uh, bargain price rotor set of pads may not provide good service and performance. Uh, if you want to do it, put them on your own vehicle. Drive them around, see how they do. You know what I mean? Uh, what you got to lose, 20 bucks. All right. Watch out for poorly maintained brake service equipment, and don't forget to take your S hook off that you hung the caliper with. Right? Do you recognize these hands right here? These are him. Got it. That's one we did the other day. You know. But anyway, if you've got equipment that machines the rotors is wore out, if you got wore out equipment, you have some issues. Promote preventative maintenance procedure. Um, one of the things is uh, fluid analysis by stimulation of copper alpha reactions, right? Can anybody say that? Fluid analysis by stimulation of copper alpha reactions, can you say that? Huh? Special. Yeah, you said, you, you said the acronym if you want to call it that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but if you, basically, if you've got a situation where the brake fluid is looking cruddy, well, let's say you take the, the brake, uh, the, you know, the top off of the brake and it's all swelled up. And whenever somebody has poured something in there that's not brake fluid, it's oil or something, it swells all of the line, I mean the, the rubber up, and then the brakes will apply and they won't release. <laughs> it's a big problem. And then everything's got to be redone. It's terrible. Now that kind of thing happens sometimes. You know? and, uh, oh my goodness, why is Sonia calling me? Hey Sonia, what's on your mind? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the blue one. Yeah, and the, the T-fob, can we fix that or is that something we have oh, to Oh, yeah, we can, we, can, we can fix the key fob in spades. We're key fob experts around here. Okay, how much is that going to put us out? I think if I order one from Amazon, you get two key fobs for $8. Yeah, we can fix that. That ain't no problem. Okay. All right. Shouldn't be a big deal. Do you need the VIN number off of it too, or? I don't think so. I've already got the VIN number off of one. You talk about the silver one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can fix those files. I'm a file fixer. Let me make sure it's the silver one. i got to get back to the office and look at it, but I, I just opened my email about the one and off. All right. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get that one. came on and the file was out. We'll get it, edited. We'll get it with an inspection. Shouldn't be a problem. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> anyway, if you if you see that you've got really really cruddy brake fluid in there, if you use your dip strip and you see that it's really really purple, uh, what does it mean when it's really heavily purple? I mean, but what's in there? What's making it purple? Is it huh? Is it <clears throat> you know, you can actually measure the voltage of the brake fluid. It's not supposed to be more than three tenths of a volt. That means you got water in it. But if it's really really a dark color and it's and you dip it out, your dip, dip strip comes out of it, your fast car dip strip, and it's purple, it means it's contaminated with copper. And why is that a problem? It's going to bug up the line. Copper's corrosive. Accelerates rust, okay? <clears throat> you remember I was telling you guys, sometimes people will take an old copper penny, put it on top of the battery, and it'll corrode, and the battery cable won't, because <laughs> it draws corrosion, you know? <clears throat> All right. Technician training, right? 
Somebody that doesn't understand brake fundamentals can't be an effective service provider. If you don't understand brakes, you need to get to where you do. Uh, that is an actual picture off of Google. <clears throat> Technical service bulletin, vehicle specific repair information, service tips. You got to have information available to you. And a lot of the times you can get so uh, comfortable doing brakes that you can make boneheaded mistakes because you didn't check things. Like one example was uh, a jeans truck was worked on at a body shop. It was a really, really, really good body shop. But they didn't bleed the brakes in the right order on that Nissan Frontier. And he never had an acceptable pedal. They felt like that was as good as it was going to get. And when he brought it in here to see if we could check them one more time, we looked it up and you have to do it in a specific order the way they say to do it or you'll never get the right pedal. <coughs> and that's, that was one even related to an ABS thing. If you just have to do them in the right order, you will never get them done out. Post test question, or pop test question one. Excessive vibration felt in a steering wheel only when the brakes are applied. Mm -hmm. The front brake rotors have just been replaced for the same problem. <coughs> Which of the following is most likely to result in this vibration? <coughs> they had the problem, hit the brake, still got the same problem. Nothing has changed. <coughs> the best answer is what I'm looking for. A vehicle has a hard brake pedal at times. Which of the following would cause this concern? Which of the following would cause the vehicle to have a hard brake pedal sometimes? Well, excuse me, not all times, not sometimes, duh. At all times. Always got a hard brake pedal. Hard to stop. The vehicle knows that while braking. Which of the following is likely to cause this condition? Or to give us a break more than it should. The growling sound changes in pitch as the vehicle slightly swerves from the left to the right. It's loudest during a left hand turn. Which of the following is the most likely is most likely to result in this condition? We fixed one of these a few weeks back in here. With the same You know, if you mess up on this one, I'm going to make you guys watch reruns of the Debbie Reynolds show, right? Okay. Which of the following can result from over tightening a wheel? Today says an outside micrometer is the preferred tool for measuring rotor lateral runout. Technician B says a dial indicator is the preferred tool for measuring rotor thickness. Who is correct about that? Good to the following input sensors are used as inputs for traction control systems. Technician is lubricating the rubber brake components while performing the brake valve. Technician A says to use a high temperature silicon based lubricant. Technician B says to use a good petroleum based lubricant.
Huh? Hey Dave, what's up? Huh? Oh, it's, oh, it comes on when all the rest of them come on. One of those three. He's fixing the light in the tool room. He wanted to know what switch turns them on. Technician is testing a vehicle with a vacuum assist brake booster. After pumping the brake pedal several times and starting the engine, the pedal drops toward the floor about a quarter of an inch. Which of the following statements is correct? Is that normal? Is the brake booster faulty? The master cylinder faulty? Or there's air in the brake system? The red brake point and lap eliminates only when the brakes are applied. Which of the following results in this condition? The only time you see it is when you mash the brake. Okay, it's now it's time for the brake paper trade. Trade paper for somebody that does not like you. Actually, that's a joke. If you did not put rusty pub flange, you got that one wrong. Mark it wrong if it's wrong. Even if you like the person who's testing you out. Vehicle has a hard brake pedal at times. Vacuum brake booster. Is that one right? Nose dives while braking. Metering valve. Oh, by the way, I was going to tell you that uh, while I was still thinking about it, because you're going to see a test on your final about this. Um, this lady that uh, worked down at the nursing building, she uh, came up here and uh, she said the rear brakes on my uh, Sebring are uh, rusty just all the time. They never change. They're always second rusty. Well, the the front one. brakes are just fine. It was a Chrysler Sebring and it was disc brakes on all four wheels. Similar to your car, except it was a convertible. And she said, I've always got rusty brakes. Like she can see it through the spokes in the wheel. Why are my brakes always rusty? It seems like they're all being rusty up here. And so uh, I instantly knew what was wrong with them. We fixed it. They look rusty on both sides. What is the back not applying? Proportioning valve. Won't let any fluid go to the rear brake. So we replaced our proportioning valve and we got those brakes straight down. <coughs> this is a faulty right front wheel bearing. How do you know it's the right front one? <coughs> when you're turning left, you're putting more of a load on the right front, right? Think about it. <laughs> Whose car did we fix? They had this problem. OJ's car, Fusion. The one that, that was the car that everything we did on that car was three times as hard as it should have been. I mean, that, everything that was supposed to move did not move. You remember how hard we had to work with that hub puller to get that CV axle to push out of that hub? And we beat on that thing and hammered on it and all that kind of thing. We got a brass hammer and hit it, hit it, hit it. We worked and worked and worked and kept working with the impact wrench and grease on the threads and all that stuff. And it eventually came out of there and I'm like, I don't know if it's ever going to come apart. Which of the following can result from over tightening a wheel? A and B. Technician A says outside mic. Neither one of those guys is right. Lateral runout should be checked how? Dial indicator and the other, the rotor thickness, it should be a micrometer. Which of the following input sensors are used as inputs for traction control systems? All of the above, depending on the system. Now, traction control systems, uh, some traction control systems are going to have a yaw rate sensor, a steering angle sensor. The ones that you typically use those, and I've got a whole, I mean, i got it tomorrow, I may even indeed give you guys the PowerPoint on that, which you're going to miss because you're not going to be here. So, but you'll be able to watch it on your phone while you're having fun, right? I know you're going to want to do that. But uh, one way or another, uh, the stability control systems, they use yaw rate sensors. But what is y'all? Y'all. 
Y'all, what's y'all? You know? Y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Not y'all, y'all. Y'all. Like that. This is pitch, and this is y'all. Right. So if it's so sliding it's sideways, it basically, and, uh, and you'll, you'll hear about that tomorrow in this PowerPoint presentation that you're going to miss. It's I really good. It's really cool. It. But whenever you're driving along, and if, let's say that you're starting to slide sideways, what in the world can your vehicle do, even if it's got control of all of the brakes, separately at each wheel, what can it do to fix that? If it applies the brake on just one wheel, it can straighten it out for you. And you didn't even know you had a problem. If you don't have that, you may spin out and run out of control. Technician's lubricate the parts you're going to use. What is a what is a high temperature silicon based lubricant? Do we have any here? That is good stuff, but what about silicone dielectric grease? You know, the kind that we got that's like a little shaving cream can? That stuff right there, uh, toward the end of when I was working at the Ford uh, dealership, Ford started saying they wanted everybody to use that for caliper slide grease because it worked better than anything else. Because the temperature doesn't bother them anymore. Right Silicone is, you know, temperature resistant. Uh, this is a normal situation. If you pump all of it, if you pump the brakes with the engine off to make sure all the vacuum's gone, put your foot on the brake, crank it up. If the pedal goes down, that means you got a good brake booster. If you do that and the pedal don't go down when you crank it up, you either ain't got no vacuum going to your brake booster or you got a bad booster. We had a, a welding instructor here, a big muscled up guy. He was here for probably 20 years, and uh, he was uh, driving his truck for a long time with a bad brake booster on it. And he kind of didn't want to get off the money to do the brake booster, but for a long time he was driving. He had his big, strong, muscled up leg, you know, and he just, he could stop that truck, you know. And one day we put the brake booster on it. Finally put it on there. I had one of them. I kept him stopped for a long time, $150. We put it on there, and I said, Jackie, you're not going to have to stand on the brake to stop the truck no more, so you have power brakes now. He didn't get halfway to the corner down there before it slid the wheel. You know, because he was used to mashing the brakes so hard, you know, kind of funny. Red brake warning light on the instrument panel illuminates only when the brakes are applied. Air in the hydraulic system. Here's a question. And see if you remember this. Uh, somebody comes to you and he says, when I get in my car and I crank it up, the red brake light stays on until I get a couple of miles down the road and it goes off. Low on brake fluid. Why? Because when the brake fluid gets high, it expands. Expands, picks up the load up a little bit. Everybody get that? Well, on brake fluid. Right? Okay, let me ask you this. What if you were uh, locked in the trunk of a car that you had never seen, but you knew it was a Honda? How would you know it was a Honda? Because when you heard the key alarm, it was going <laughs> with four beeps. However, that ain't true anymore because some of the other car makers have got four beep. <laughs> Church that they've added this thing. Alright, that was a little fun thing. Alright. Put those in your uh, put those in your